tell me about the this this. How did this song come about? Because it, Garth said this wasn't. In, he, he, it didn't. Ha how did it happen? How did this the song at the end is so mm -hmm. beautiful that you guys wrote for him or for the movie? How did that happen? Well, Vano uh, <clears throat> told me that he uh, he was going to be in a film. I said, Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he said, um, Well, it's uh, it's an animated film. I said, Okay, and I'm going to be a lion. <laughs> Oh, you what? <laughs> and then he said it was Sing too, and I, I, I knew of Sing the first thing, and I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. And then he said, um, and also, Garth said, maybe we could write a song for, for it, like a special song for the movie. So um, we had a, a, some time together booked. So I was Did like, I say that Garth wanted oh. it? Because I was fibbing, if that's okay. true. Because I just, I, because the thing happened a little, I, th I remember it slightly more organically, like, you, maybe you did mention that you wanted it, but I, in my own head, think... No, you did this. I oh, can it, remember. it was me. Okay, good. You said, there's a song in this. Yes. Right. And I thought, yeah, that would be great. But I thought <laughs> you meant, like, you were being nice, like, yeah, there would be a song, like, you'd say, oh, right. we should have lunch. And you go, yeah, and then you don't have lunch, <laughs> you know, because reality, I really did think you were just right. being really nice and enthusiastic in that call. And then but I might have told Edge, yeah, it was your me idea. a totally different story. You said like <laughs> they're gagging for a U2 song. For this <laughs> well, if I, I, I just didn't know how, how, how much, how real that real that was. Right. Um, if reality outside of that lovely conversation was going to catch up. But then when you t appeared, when we recorded again, uh, to the first few lines for you, your character, you'd finished it and it was great. And you, you just, were, you reached into your pocket. I don't know if you remember, you went, oh, by the way, I wrote that song. And you pulled out your phone and played the song that's at the end of the film. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't know any of what was going on behind the scenes. And I was flabbergasted. Did you cry? I, all right, he knows me very well. Yes, all right, I did get a bit emotional. Not on the phone playback. He knew how much it would cost. Yeah, yeah, I thought, it's going to cost loads. <laughs> I haven't even finished the film. It was one of those moments where you then played it to me on a big stereo system afterwards, and I was thinking, okay, firstly, this is beautiful. Secondly, this is the end of the film. This is the whole end of the oh, film you're wow. handing to me on a plate. And, uh, and that gesture alone I found very moving. And I'm sitting there with you and you're playing this thing. And I was slightly, I was trying to hold it together in front of you. I hope I did a good job of that. But it's quite moving when, you know, that's a, that's a seriously amazing gesture and a lovely song. So there's a double whammy for me, really. <laughs> it still gets me when I hear it. Yeah. It, uh, do they have it in tonight's version? Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> was did. Was it okay? Yeah. yeah it's great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to sing it. You oh. didn't know that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, over oh, there. We have another question. Oh. oh that's a great question. She go. loved Callaway. Callaway. As Thank I you. did. Well, hmm. sometimes, you know, Callaway needs people more than he realizes, Clay Callaway. And yeah, you know, he sings your song, Save My Life, but really, he's talking about. Sometimes I think it's the people who hear the songs that save the performer's life, really. Give us a special life and, you know, we're so grateful. So, people like you saved my life, thank you. Mm. Saved Edge's life. Mm. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Yes, because I was with the animators every day, and there's uh, at most there were about 90 in the team. And it's very, very hard work because each person will average maybe making two seconds of animation per week. So it's very intense. Some shots would take three months to make, sometimes more. It would depend. There's a shot of his character very close up. Do you remember when Ash is trying to convince him to come back and he's hosing his plants? It's quite a long shot just on his face. That was three months for one guy to animate. Wow. Yeah. Did you know you were saying he was saying an amazing thing about uh, that he noticed eyebrows and shoulders. Were you just saying that? Yes, back just stage? before I'd worked on animation, I never really noticed the importance of where shoulders and eyebrows are. 
but they change everything. And so I've become obsessed with where people's sh shoulders are now. Like, yeah, it's really weird, the things you learn in animation. It's like, oh, tension, oh, I'm relaxed. You know, all this stuff. You can find all kinds of things you can do with that. Yeah. Bono poetically just said, shoulders are the eyebrows of the body. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like the poetry's just rolling out of them tonight. <laughs> There is some tequila involved. <laughs> the other thing about uh, Garth is he, he can do the voice and performance of every character in here. As he writes it, he does them all. So maybe you'll do some of the characters for us, Garth. Well, I am Miss Crawley. I'm the elderly lizard. Oh, the tear. Oh. That's me. Will you do some of her lines? Well, she's a kind of like that. Hello. Oh, Mr. Moon. <laughs> And then, um, can we just draw attention to somebody who isn't credited as a voice, but do you remember Mr. Crystal, the big bad wolf? Do you remember he has a little cat assistant who's really... That's Spike. Oh. Oh, Spike! I was the cat. I was oh. both, Is he good? Yeah, I was good. both scared and in love with you my were boss. That was your idea. Portia! Yeah. Portia! Yeah, yeah. Isn't that right? She, she's got to get the Callaway. Yeah. Big fan. Yeah. You could have done both oh, I'm characters. I'm obsessed with Jimmy Kazar. It's a great <laughs> character. Um, other questions? Oh, can, yeah. Can we do adults or are we still on kids? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> adults are allowed. Not as interesting, but. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a kid. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. A lot of times actors will say they see themselves in the animated character that they voice. I'm curious, what did you see of yourself, Bono, as you watched? Play. Well, when Garth called me, again, I was in this um, very city and walking, I was walking up towards the reservoir and we had this long conversation and I didn't know um, Garth really, o only from that first meeting and, and he, he wanted to talk about the nature of singing, you know, and what would dry up a, a, a person's voice, what, what, why would you stop singing? And I sort of said, you know, that I thought, well, grief could either can open a voice up, which I think it did to me, or it can close a voice. And, um, and the idea of a muse is something that I think I understand. And, and the idea that he had lost his reason to sing is something that I understand. And, and if you love somebody, and that's the reason that you sing, and they're gone, there's no amount of, uh, you know, encouragement's going to get you back out on stage. You have to find a reason to sing. And I, I've been saying this a lot, but, you know, there are different reasons that people sing. There really are. And um, I saw Scarlett earlier and I was saying, I said, you know, you're not a professional singer. You're better than that. Because she sang that so, so beautifully, mm -hmm. that song. I, uh, she's Ash. And... It was just incredible the way she sang that. And I'd, I, I, when the singers start to sing, you know, and they do the eyes and teeth thing and hello, we're all in show business. There's a lot of that going on at the moment. It's wonderful, but it doesn't touch me at all. And so I, I, I need other reasons to sing. I mean, I, there's another part of me that sings from a different place. And I related to that in, in this character and, you know, I, I love these, I love these films. I, lo I love what Garth is doing. And they're like, they're, they're in, when you're having fun and you're being, you just, you know, they're so fast paced and they're so quick and smart. You get to actually play with some, bit, some, some ideas like that. But that's, I think, you know, that melancholy yeah. um, is part of the story, is it not? Yeah, it had to be from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I was, very impressed that you went there. I remember when you recorded your emotional scenes and one of your daughters was there, I think it was Eve. Mm. And I heard her when you finished your take in the background saying, oh, dad, you're killing me. <laughs> it was, you were brilliant at that. I was really impressed. Yeah, I wanted to be, I was related to the badass lion who was, you know, shouting at people, get off the fence and all that. I, I obviously, the, you know, something part of me, <laughs> you know, I wanted to play it like uh, Jack Nicholson, you know, that's just, I don't want honey in my tea, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and Garth was saying, could you, no, lion, lion, you, and just keeping me, I'm going, oh, damn, I just want to be that guy. <laughs> um, but, 
but he wanted the the movie to have a real real um you know to have that heart yeah and so a broken heart i could give him other question why'd you pick System of a Down South when Miss Crawley was in the car. System of a Down, why did I pick that for Miss Crawley in the car? Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you knew the song already? Yeah. And it's one of the greatest songs ever, right? <laughs> why wouldn't you pick System of a Down? Like with, no, that's a bit of a smarty pants answer, but really, I was thinking what would be so great? She's already driving a sports car what would be the song and i tried a couple out and they were fine but they were a bit obvious and then that one came on i was like that, that's the one and i remember playing it for myself and recording the voice and only once i hit record i realized i didn't know the words so it was just her going duh, 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 you know just sort of trying to keep up with it and um and that was the take we used yeah so it was a that's that's great. One of my yeah favorite great scene i love that scene. so uh, well, there's a question back here yes yes miss <laughs> ah. Another great question. Mm, I'm on my way over. <laughs> Shortly. We get off the fence. <laughs> um, yes, back there. Um, so, beautiful movie. Well done, everybody. Thank you. Um, I have two little daughters who I think would have really loved this. Um, just everything that little kids are kind of going through right now after the past two years. What would you hope... You know, particularly the stress that children are feeling yeah. right now in school. What would you hope that little children would take from this movie into their own lives and into their own futures? I think, most of all, I'd love them, if they go on this journey with the characters, that they, they share that triumph. That they share that little guy, those, that, that little friend, that group of friends going on this journey and getting through this together and being rewarded at the end. I'd like them to carry that with them out of the cinema and feel like that's something they, they can experience, they can share that triumph. That it wasn't just something they saw other people do, but it feels like something that they can relate to. That is, but I feel that for the whole audience. I would want everyone to go through it with everybody, you know. But certainly for kids, my, my, my sister's a school counsellor and she's dealing with children with those issues all the time and we're always talking about the importance of stories and you know they're not just there to dazzle and entertain but to you know kind of carry you a bit you know and uh um th th reinforce positivity yeah. when that isn't around for for, for for a lot of people reinforce that those kind of things that's certainly for me anyway yeah i think yeah that's exactly right um this is a time where there's so much of a headwind there's so much uh, fear around and this is a movie that basically says you can actually get there you can if you if you really have that dream and you persevere you can get through and you can get there and i think that's a great message right now i remember that i i didn't um whether it was school or anywhere on the street or around the place i really didn't like bullies and you can be bullied in so many different ways you know and by circumstance that you're in or people or or whatever and i i think it's just in a real simple way in this film i think people really you know the bully doesn't win and um and and i also because we're in a band edge and myself and we we are you know we're in a band of in this four of us and we started off in school so we were kids really and i mean it was larry 14 or 15 15 you were 15 15 yeah 14 and um and so you know this the way the bullying in our situation was just this just the circumstance of trying to be in a band in the where we came from and you know breaking out of that but um, I just I just like seeing the bullies get pushed away, you know, uh, as a lot of people have been bullied by their situation today, you know, and, and that's true. Mothers and, and kids around in the apartments, you know, the quarantine has has pushed people around. It's very important, that quarantine uh, when it's important is really important, but that you can feel bullied 
And the imagination is a place, sometimes that's where you, you can kind of come up with a response to that, I think. And it's really a great imaginative piece. But the real lesson for me, and this is a really un-Irish thing, is it's so quick. The thing moves so quick. And, you know, the storytelling, uh, uh, it's like, it's, it's, it's very succinct. Sorry, I'm Thank not you. very succinct. <laughs> no, I Come like on. that. We should probably get, wrap this up. Let's take one more question. Yes, sir. Um, who chooses all the songs? Who chooses all the songs? There's a gang of us, and it starts off when I'm writing the script, I'll be writing song ideas into the script. It's just a great big playful, it's, I'm going to use the word mess, if you don't mind, but there's no, there's no science to it. It's just, you think a song's going to work, you try it in the scene, and for some reason it doesn't. Or then you have like a system of a down moment, and it's just, oh, is, yeah, exactly, and it's like, that, that, that worked a treat. Um, and uh, that, so it's not scientific, it's very playful, and it's a, we go through all kinds of choices, because you're not just trying to find something that works for the character or the scene, but also what just came before it and what's coming after it. And you're constantly moving them around, and there's a group of us that do it. Luckily, I'm How not the guy songs? that has to clear it. Mm. How many songs are in the film? I don't know. I think about 40. Wow. That's, what's, that's, again, the speed. One of the things that I like about what you're doing, if I might say, is that, you know, everything's very segmented, the way people listen to music. You know, on the radio, you just get this station playing that and whatever, you know, that station playing the rock station or hip hop. It's a, and here's this thing where you're just mixing everything up. And I, I love that. And I love that system of the down or right next to a more formal songwriting. And, and you know, we've been on a edge of myself have become students of songwriting in a way. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we're excited about trying out some different things and to go in places we wouldn't, you know, normally go. Mm. It's, it's, it started about, about, it's probably about 10 years now, but songwriting is incredible. Stephen Sondheim just passed away and you look at his lyrics and you see they come from a completely different world than where we came from, but I'm suddenly interested in a way I, I, I wasn't. You see this, these traditions, different traditions of songwriting, and even something from our, where we would come from, like, when, like a Velvet Underground or Lou Reed, you know, he was in, he was in like Tin Pan Alley or whatever that building was, the Brill Building, and studying formal songwriting. And I, I just love this opportunity to do to do this for this film and, it, and that it worked and that you put it in the film. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are honored to be in I your film. I am honored that you're in the film, that you did everything you did. And I'm sitting here with you now all these years later. We finished it and I'm, I'm really proud of everything we did. Bravo. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you.